Just remember, Dorothy, I'll handle everything. I'm a salesman. I deal with people all the time. I know exactly what I'm doing. Oh, shut up, Stan. <laughs> Mellow out, Dorothy. Once we get in there, we have to exercise psychological control. That's why I'm wearing this suit. You make me sick. Hey, everyone knows good guys wear white. This suit subliminally tells the auditor I'm a good guy. I could vomit just looking at you. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Bornack, step into my office, please. Watch me work my magic babe. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Wendell Murray. I'll be conducting your audit today. Nice to meet you. I'm Dorothy Zbornak. This is my ex-husband, Stanley. <laughs> Wendell. Paisan. <laughs> We're going to jail. What did you call me? Uh, before he answers that, uh, let me reiterate, we are bitterly divorced. <laughs> Relax, Dorothy. Wendell, I called you Paisan, friend, brother of the scalp. Because if I may get philosophical for just one moment, I've always believed we bald men are like any other minority. That's why we have to stick together. Who you calling bald? <laughs> Nobody, nobody. Just shut up and put your hair on. Yes, dear. Wendell, if I may call you Wendell, did I mention the fact that I'm a member of the Rainbow Coalition? Oh. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Bornack, may I remind you that as an employee of the Internal Revenue Service, it is my sole obligation to see that the government gets all the money it has coming to it? And I'll bet you do a fine job of it. Thank you. However, I have no personal stake in this whatsoever. Now, is that understood? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you bet, my man. Then cut the crap, Paisan. <laughs> you know, folks, I've been at this job almost four years now, and in that short time, I can honestly say that I have never seen such an inept clumsy, downright stupid attempt to avoid paying income tax. Thanks. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> I can also honestly say that I'm amazed the way this lays out. You only owe the government a small amount. You're kidding. No. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand? We don't have that kind of money. Uncle Sam doesn't like to hear that. Aunt Dorothy doesn't enjoy saying it. <laughs> We expect you each to cough up $2,500 in 30 days. Well, what if we can't? We'll just have to put a lien on your bank accounts, your property, and your salaries. And if that doesn't work, we'll just have to incarcerate you. Oh, my God. We're going to jail. <laughs> That's right, Stanley. And please, let me know where you and Bubba register for your China. <laughs> appreciate your bidding on Dorothy. It's for a good cause. You'll be rewarded. Not in this lifetime. <laughs> Variety is the watchword for our next bachelorette, Dorothy's Bornack. Come on up, Dorothy. This is perfect. The way the bidding's going, we won't be out more than $20, $30 a piece. If Dorothy's not off winging her way to Molokai to assist Father Damien in his work with the lepers, <laughs> you can find her hang gliding high above the Florida Keys. Rose, where did you get that? From your mother. <laughs> Before she and I talked, I wasn't aware of any of it. <laughs> She's a scratch golfer who, under President Jimmy Carter, served as the United States Senate Majority Whip. <laughs> and she likes to read. I figured, close with the truth, it'll kind of anchor the rest. I want to thank you all for holding this event on a night when my hang glider is in the shop and uh, Congress is in recess and the lepers are on Geraldo. <laughs> Go ahead, Rose. Right, Dorothy. All right, now let's start the bidding at five dollars. Five dollars. One hundred dollars. 
Stanley's. Stanley, what are you doing here? I'm buying a date with the woman I love. Oh, geez, not in front of people. <laughs> 110. What the hell is he doing? Didn't you give him a limit? <laughs> 200. Security, have this man removed. He's a lonely male impersonator. 210. What? What is wrong with you? The woman's been with lepers. <laughs> 300. Stanley, stop it. I am not going out with you. I would rather be bound and gagged and, and left on an anthill covered with honey. 400. <laughs> 410. Sold. Oh, Dorothy, I say that. 500. Sold. She says that. Rose, do something. Sold. Sorry, Dorothy, that's $500 for the children's hospital. I guess dreams really can come true. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, this is all a very simple mistake. Stan and I are ready to get an exterminator to take care of those bugs. I don't know how this thing got so far, but believe me, we are not criminals. I want you both to get an idea of what it's like for all the people that you collect rent from. So I'm going to sentence both of you to live in apartment 3C in this building until such time as it is brought up to code. Wait a minute, you, you want me to live with him in the same apartment? That's right. But there are bugs there. <laughs> and they'll think Stan is their leader. All right, in you go. Oh, isn't this lovely? <laughs> Look, they put in a bunk bed. And a chair? Oh, look, Dorothy, a chair. This isn't going to be so bad. This isn't going to be bad at all. Yeah, well, I suppose. Oh, Blanche, can we get out of here? It's starting to get dark. You know, Dorothy, in some ways we're lucky. How many people get locked up with someone they were attracted to? I don't know. The name Marion Barry comes to mind. <laughs> Good luck, Dorothy. I'll miss you. I love you. Uh, Someday, sweetheart, I'm going to get out of this hellhole, and I'm going to come looking for you. <laughs> Don't spend all your time in prison hating me, Dorothy. Learn a trade. <laughs> Dorothy, tonight I'm going to be out front in the laundry truck. Gotcha. So? If you hear screaming, don't call the cops. <laughs> Okay, let's go, ladies. Don't worry, pussycat. We won't rest till we get you out of here. Thanks, Mom. Who wants Chinese? I got her credit card. I got her credit card. you not to do that. I know, but I'm going stir crazy. There's no way out. No way out. Stanley, they let you keep your belt and shoelaces. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> you know, in a way, this apartment reminds me of our first place. Do you remember the first night we spent there? Yes. And as I recall, I was trying to read then, too. <laughs> You're still mad at me, aren't you? Yes, I'm mad at you. Every time you come into my life, something bad happens. Oh, you're right. You're right. You know, I wish we could go back to the beginning, try again, go back to that first apartment. We didn't have much, but we were happy to have our own place. Those were good times. <laughs> you had gotten your first job. Yeah, back then, you could give blood every week. <laughs> Remember the time your mother took care of the baby? It was our first time alone in a year. You bought me wine and flowers, I remember. Remember how much fun we had in that apartment that night? I remember. You know, Dorothy, the two of us could get into that bottom bunk and have some fun again. What do you say? For old time's sake? I, I don't know. 
Oh, okay, but let's do it right. What say you run down and, and buy some good wine and some flowers? Mm, you bet. Chrissy. Chrissy? I had to talk to you, Big Stan. Why didn't you return my phone calls? I, I, there's nothing to talk about, Chrissy. Big Stan? <laughs> Who's she? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, this is my ex-wife, Dorothy. Dorothy, this is my soon-to-be ex-wife, Chrissy. Hi. I want you back, stick man. I need you back. I was so wrong to think I'd be happier with Jean-Paul. I realize that now. I can't spend another night without you in that big, empty, lonely, solar-heated water bed. No need to say a word, I understand. Here you go, honey. Uh, Dorothy, wait. Chrissy, there is nothing to discuss. Oh, but stick, man. <laughs> I mean, the girl flew all the way from Maui. Oh, that's all right. I'm a stewardess. I fly for free. Oh, no, but the thought should count for something. <laughs> Chrissy, something happened here in Miami, something that changed the way I feel. Listen, Stanley, you know, before... Dorothy, I Dorothy, really don't think be embarrassed. Should... Chrissy deserves to hear the truth. It's all over between us, Chrissy. This is the woman I love. Seeing Dorothy again made me realize how superficial my relationship with you really was. Sure, the sex was great. Terrific, actually. <laughs> but it's okay with Dorothy, too. <laughs> and, and with Dorothy, there was so much more. I'm sorry, Chrissy. Uh, there's nothing left for us. The fact is, there wasn't that much there to begin with. <laughs> she never could hold her liquor. <laughs> Um, Stan, did you really mean what you said about there not being that much between you and Chrissy? That's right. I'm glad, because now I don't feel so guilty. What are you talking about? Stanley, I, I don't feel the same way about us as you do. You're kidding. No, you know, what happened the other night brought back lovely memories, but I'm not the same woman you walked out on two years ago. I mean, my whole life has changed, and quite frankly, I like the way it is. The fact that I'm on my, my own now, I... God, Dorothy, are you saying you won't take me back? Well, we could never have things the way we used to have, Stan. You you're see, telling that... me that you're not going to take me back? Yes, Stanley, that's right. Let me get this straight. <laughs> you're definitely not going to take me back? Look, Stanley, I'm sorry. Dorothy, I mean, I'd Dorothy, like to hear the rest of this, but I better get you, down to the I... lobby and grab Chrissy before somebody else does. <laughs> Hey, terrific sex is better than nothing. Well, here's to terrific sex. And the dumb blonde who's not gonna get any. <laughs> yeah. Who is it? Dorothy. Dorothy. Stay under the covers. I'll get rid of her. Uh, Dorothy, it's late. What do you want? Open the door, Stanley. Dorothy, you're, you're in your nightgown. I came here on an impulse. I couldn't help myself. Well, it's really a nice gesture, babe, but I'm afraid I'll have to take a rain check. <laughs> Stanley, you truly are one chromosome away from being a potato. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I gotta get up early tomorrow. I, I need to get to sleep, Dorothy. Yeah, you're wearing your toupee to bed. That means one of two things. Either there's a woman in your bed, or Suzanne Summers is on The Tonight Show. Would you get to your point, Dorothy? I didn't come here to see you. I came here to talk to her. Dorothy, you... No, it'll just take a minute, and then I'll be out of here, and you can go back to what you were doing. Thank you. I have been trying to figure out all day why you're doing this. I've been trying to find one reason that would make it okay, but I can't. I, I cannot believe that you would jeopardize our relationship for this. I, mean, I, I guess it's possible you were attracted to Stan. I mean, Lord knows I stayed with him for 38 years, but 
I think this time you could have resisted just in case it might have made a difference to me. And I think the thing that hurts me most of all is that you didn't have the guts to tell me that you're sleeping with my husband. Well, gee, I would have. <laughs> but I didn't know myself until about an hour ago. <laughs> That's why there are some things I have to say to you tonight. I love you, Dorothy. I know that sounds crazy coming from a guy who walked out on you after 38 years, but it's true. Look, I've already forgiven you for that, Stan. Besides, in the grand scheme of things, it's not so terrible to wait 38 years to make your first big mistake. <laughs> it wasn't my first mistake. What? Remember the chain link fence retailers convention in Atlantic City in 1957? Oh, my God. You had an affair at the convention. No, there was no convention. I just had an affair. Oh, <laughs> She didn't mean a thing to me. She was a waitress in a little Greek diner on her way to work. Every morning I'd come in, she'd put some rolls on the table and say, can I butter your bun, Stan? <laughs> One morning she said it, and there were no rolls on the table. <laughs> Next thing I knew, we were in Atlantic City. Dorothy... I swear to you, it was just that one time. Forgive me. Forgive you. Forgive you. I'm sitting at home with two screaming kids praying that you'll sell enough chain link to put food on the table and you're off planting your flag on Mount Olympus. <laughs> Dorothy, make it sound so cheap. Please, tell me you understand. I need to know that you forgive me before I let them cut open my heart. They may have to stand in line. <laughs> Dorothy, please. Oh, all right, all right. You're off the hook, Stanley. You can go to the hospital with a clean conscience. I forgive you. Dorothy, you've got the compassion of a priest. You really do. But you'd have to be the entire Vatican softball team to forgive me for the other time. <laughs> the other time. I didn't mean it to happen. I was having a drink in the bar that they added onto that Greek diner when a woman sat down next to me. We talked, we drank, we broke a few dishes. The next thing I knew, I came to in a motel with my toupee in my mouth. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe that I am hearing this. I mean, I always assumed that something like this could happen, but I just figured it would be with that blonde secretary you had who couldn't type or take shorthand. You're wrong on two counts, Dorothy. She could take shorthand, and I did have an affair with her. I am shocked. That airhead could take shorthand. <laughs> Look, Dorothy, tomorrow I am checking into the hospital and I may never come out. And if that's the case, I want you to know that despite everything, I have never, ever loved anyone as much as I loved you. I know that, Stan. Then you forgive me? I forgive you. That makes me feel so much better. And that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? You're ruining the biggest step of my life. You're getting married, and you couldn't send an invitation to Stanley's born act, the man who gave you his name. I'm sorry. The list was alphabetical. The Zionists aren't speaking to me either. <laughs> Stanley, what do you want from me? I want to show you something. Dorothy... You see this hair? It is the only one on my forehead. The other traitors receded years ago, but this proud and loyal sprout clings desperately. It is unrelenting. It is true. What about it? Dorothy, it is this hair that I hate more than all the others. It mocks me. You're psychotic. Because I'm bald? Because you're kidnapping me. I'm not kidnapping you. I'm taking you to church in style. You are? This is my gift to you. I just wanted a minute alone with you to give my blessings, to show I care. Don't you see? I am that hair. And you're my big, crazy old skull. I may give you some reason to resent me, but 
You cannot shake me. I am loyal. Stanley, you wore a toupee for 27 years. <laughs> Don't mess with my metaphor. <laughs> All right, Stanley, the truth. Things have been going so well with Lucas, I didn't want to deal with you. But as Freud said, our beds are crowded. When I sleep with Lucas, I'm not alone. There's this phantom of you there, and he has the haunts of his prior relationships, and, well, I... Well, I can't pretend you're not a part of me. So what are you saying? You slept with this guy? <laughs> Stanley, you're missing my point. We named it! <laughs> what I'm saying is... Thank you. Stanley, for the first time in a long while, you're really acting like a man. I love you, Dorothy. I've always loved you. And I love you, Stanley. <laughs> now drive.